Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Summit 2 Europe by G2A.com. We're into the middle of our first series of the day. It's Power Rangers taking on Cloud9. They had Game 1 by the throat, but they let it slip away. Three smoke ganks, Ben. Exact same place. Pretty much the exact same way. Maybe not the best item selections, not the best execution fights, but just didn't, didn't de-ward. It was close. Fool me once, fool me twice, but yeah, it was three times, man. That was the killer. So... Despite that great start, they're now down 0-1, guys. It is a best of three, and your draft is officially underway. So we'll hop into it now. It's a different style of draft, though. We actually saw the Necrophos ban, even though it didn't feel particularly effective that game for Power Rangers. Maybe Cloud9 just afraid that if they run the Terror Blade again, that one good Necrophos ult could cost them the game. Yeah, I would actually be much more scared of the Wisp. The Wisp just secured... Um their mid game after a pretty astounding first 15 20 minutes. Power Rangers going with a tried and true Skywrath, Faceless Void. Maybe worried that they didn't really have that much late game last game or no AoE lockdown. Probably more the case. Yeah, that definitely could be it. And with that said, we won't see the Power Rangers Centaur this game probably. They go for the Void this time around, but. It is a very reliable killing combo. It still kind of fits their overall approach to the game, which seems to be somewhat similar to what FNG was showing yesterday for VP Polar. Pick a lineup that once they get just a few core levels and items, or in some cases just levels, can just still start killing heroes all around the map. We'll see if it works again. I mean, it really did work that game. They just ended up failing their execution later on, but they had that game. Yeah. Uh, Faces Void versus Witchhawker, though, isn't generally the greatest though and we'll see whether they can make it work um it's just very difficult to get any sort of kills um if you don't get the wish doctor in because you you're pretty much uh dealing as much damage as you're taking especially if you have mask of madness so yeah i like the wish doctor early pickup uh too from cloud nine um somewhat defensive support they really like their um Vengeful Spirit to bail EE out of certain situations because when they play for Protect 1, he can just easily get shut down by Chronosphere plus, I don't know, whatever they may throw at him. Skywrath ulti and just dump everyone on, kind of like how Ember Spirit was so clutch to Power Rangers uh, lineup last game. Yeah, that's what VP Polar did to them yesterday with the Chronosphere and Centaur combo. They just destroyed Eternal Envy's Terror Blade. Yeah. He had no chance. And they could go for those same heroes of Power Rangers. They go for Ancient Apparition. Great synergy with the Chronosphere. Good against the Witch Doctor heal. Yeah. A lot of this lineup really depends on Chronosphere right now, though. If he doesn't get a good Chrono, you're probably not hitting either of those ults. Yeah, we have yet to see their like, safe lane farmer or off lane, or whichever one the Face of Void isn't playing. So that that will determine a lot of how they play, whether it's like a... You know, maybe an aggressive hero like Lifestealer um, that they can pair up with or something that's a little bit more passive. I mean, they could also go Ember Spirit as safe lane again, too. I think the Ember Spirit worked out really well for them and should probably go that route. Okay. I mean, I would say if it ain't broke, why fix it? But I, I felt like it was a little broken that game. They weren't even doing well, but I'll stick with their tried and true here, Cloud9. Instead of the Ancient Apparition, the Witch Doctor, but otherwise the exact same draft. The one difference, which I'm not sure how much it matters with the new map, is that Cloud9 are Radiant this time around, so the Roche Sneaks may be a bit trickier, but... They're also up against a really good scouting here on H Apparition. So we'll see. We'll see if they can make this work. Yeah, and they also don't have AA on their team too, which is... I think a significant source of their damage output in those last, like, five fights of Cloud9 too. Witch Doctor can also be that uh, same role, though. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, not too much of Cloud9's draft, pretty much their same thing. They could also switch Puck to offlane and 
um, put fought on something else in the mid, but not really a huge need for that right now. Maybe someone up front and personal, too. Power Rangers, what do they want to go for? The Ember's a possibility. Good synergy with this Void, Skyroth Mage, Ancient Apparition. The Centaur is still out there if they want to take the approach VP Polar did last time around. Although Cloud9 have pretty good zoning supports this time. Mm, I would like to see, what, Gyrocopter maybe? I think Gyrocopter is still pretty good. Good synergy with Faces Void, some AoE to clear out terribly. They actually don't have any AoE right now. I mean, maybe Ice Blast, but that's mm, it. Maybe like a Maelstrom, but that doesn't really cut it later on. Yeah, it really doesn't. No cutting. Mm, let's see, any other heroes? They could also go Luna and try and push high ground earlier. They don't have to deal with A Ultimate, which is not go. as bad. Yeah, I was going to say they could go Lich, but they already have their support, so... And Frost Armor is pretty dirty versus the Terribly Witch Doctor, and very good to combo with the Chrono. So they do go Luna. Nuke damage, very good against Terribly. This is actually, I think it's almost the same draft as what BP Polar ran the other day. Yeah, I, th I think so. It's it's pretty good. I say Luna is one of the better heroes at de dealing with Terribly, especially... Glaives just wreck illusions. If you, if you get enough farm, then... Those illusions don't really offer much. She's also a good butterfly carrier too, which is uh, pretty good because Terrible Blade, if he, even if he gets MKB, his illusions don't yeah, do, don't get the true strike. So it's it's nice to have that. And then it hero. and then it becomes all about the hex on the puck, which we'll see if Fauna has a better start this time. But Luna fixes void. Not terribly great synergy since Luna's short range, but a well positioned Chronosphere can can uh, mitigate that. It's not awful. If you get a good chrono and you can just eclipse into it, that can be devastating. Mm -hmm. Well, not if they get a pipe. <laughs> just don't even. <laughs> it's not gonna happen. Man. Stop trying to make it happen. The dude. pipes. What are they gonna go for? LC again? Oh, well, LC was actually been. Cloud nine ban the LC. Mm. I don't feel like that's a hero. Power Rangers pick. Bristleback, for Fada. What else is there? There's this troll. Yeah, Troll's actually pretty good here. Troll well, pipe, Blind easy. is nice versus Void. He's got really high armor. Um, I just feel like it's not, uh, it's it's not enough like front loaded burst, which is they either I th I say they either need like a burst hero or they need uh, a front liner. Hmm. There's Centaur. That's not really something Bone Seven plays a lot of. So if in that case, it would be a Fada puck. Some other Fauna heroes. We've seen his Dragonite not so much lately. Pretty tanky. But there's a lot of magic damage, so I'm not sure how good a Dragonite would be this game. And it makes their draft a little bit greedy. Mm -hmm. mm. I can't really think of too many other options that would be great for them. Let's see. Yeah, Centaur's okay. It's nice to dodge Skywrath ganks. Um, hmm. I don't know. Not really many. Of them. I, Cloud Nine don't really have very surprising, surprising uh, drafts. So, so we shall see. They really don't like change. For Power Rangers, there's also I'm trying to think. What else? What's different? The Jakiro. That's cool. I like that. It gives them a lot of push. It's going to be a core Jakiro. It looks like. Yeah, I think it's a Bone Seven Jakiro. Yeah. Both seven Jakiro fought a puck. I mean, is is decent. Oh, okay. The Dragonite, the DK Luna push. It's this also really <laughs> messes with illusions later on. Yeah, it's difficult to pull off though with the faceless void, just because they all three of those require intense amounts of farm. Yeah. Ancient stacking could be good this game. Hard General on Dire stacking. though. And, I mean, their offlaner is not able to farm that either. Cheshire Cat will be on the Void, so... Maybe Luna gets the Helm of the Dominator. But then you could be vulnerable to Cloud9's early aggression, so... With that said, we get underway for potentially our last game of this series. Could be just a forcing a game three if Power Rangers have their way. Cloud9 leading the set 1-0, though. In a very shaky fashion, but they mostly stick with the same thing as what they ran the last time around. Yeah, I, I think Jakiro pickups actually really important because they actually needed a lot more magical damage, especially since they went for a Witch Doctor instead of AAA. Um, this game, 
and they're up against what they saw to be a Luna and a Faceless Void and now a DK, they would actually be fairly vulnerable to just getting AC'd and not having the damage output to burst through those HP pools. So I think with the Jakiro, it's a nice mix. Forces them to get BKB. Um, and on top of that, they still had to deal with physical damage from Terrorblade and Wish Doctor. So a nice spread there. Nice, well-balanced lineup again from Cloud9. Yeah, and less farm intensive than PRs overall. Yeah. They can use the farm, but they definitely don't need it as much. So, with that said, let's get underway. Game 2 has begun. We introduce our lineups now. Cheshire Cat playing your Faceless Void in the offlane. Going mid will be Shaychal on the Dragon Knight towards the Dire Jungle. Is J4 on the Skyrath Mage. Ditya Ra playing the Luna. Sonico on the Ancient Apparition. And then for your Radiant Squad, Cloud9 leading 1 0 on the best of three. Bone 7, the offlane Jikiro, something that he doesn't really play all that much. AUI 2000, the Witch Doctor. Going mid will be Eternal Envy's Terrorblade. So they are switching things up a bit with the lanes here. Fada on the sideline is the Puck, and that leaves Pylai Dai as the Vengeful Spirit. Ward got dropped down for the Void. Not going to block the camp, but should give him good vision. There's a defensive ward here for the Radiant, so they can see any ganks towards that... Towards the... Or from the bottom side of the map, I should say. And looks like neither team really wants to be too aggressive, really. I guess they expect to be aggro trident with the Luna AA Sky. It's not a bad try lane at all. Um, but looks like they will scout it out. And having Terrorblade mid is alright. Although it will be either a one-on-one -on -one matchup or with an unusual lane partner. Usually the only dual lane you see mid is um, Wisp and Lich. Or the main two. Because they can stack effectively. They can keep up in experience even though... Um, you're in a dual lane, which generally puts you at a slight disadvantage. Uh, it seems like we don't game sound. Alright, there we go. So, let's see. Off lane Jakiro. He's up against the Skyrath Mage, Ancient Apparition, and Luna. This is still a pretty dangerous lane, even for a Jakiro. He's got to be careful about not overextending. At the same time, up oh, mid lane. Miss Shadeshlow. So they rotate Pilot Dian. He got off Avenge Stun. They took a level in Maledict, and Eternal Envy uses Metamorphosis, so... Well, the kill comes on the Dragonite, and hey, at level 1, he's not very durable. No points in Dragon's Blood, doesn't have his boots yet. He didn't really use any regen, though, so he'll still have the bottle at a reasonable time, but more importantly, Terrorblade off to a really good start. I don't know why why PR has his top ward, or rune ward, uh, there, too. It's it's not like they're going to really try and contest his Luna AA Skyrat. That's a really strong lane. Uh, well, it's and, not a tri lane anymore. Though. Well, it's, it's still not a lane that they're looking to contest in, in any sense, just because of how Cloud9 develops their draft is always terribly centric. So if they are going to look to gank a lane, it's not going to be like two supports from a safe lane rotating the top. It's generally going to be more towards their mid. That's certainly true. And the thing is now it's it's not a tri lane. So now the, the Jakiro can actually have a pretty good time. Not too much kill potential with just these two, unless he really overextends. Maybe around level 3 to 5 level shot, but... They forced to ro rotate the Ancient Apparition mid. He's going to go for a single pull here, just going for the stack. And they'll try to control the runes a bit top lane, but that early rotation from the Venge. Venge seems to be a very strong hero lately. We saw it used really well yesterday by FNG in his drafts, and be used again quite well here by Cloud9. Yeah, it, it's... She has a really good skill set from transitioning early to uh, early to late. Like some of the other ones, like let's say Enchantress, just don't transition that well. Oh, Bone Seven caught out a bit. They'll need to dive this heavily if they want to go for that kill. No, nope, not gonna bother. J4, two tower shots, one auto attack away from death. The pings come out, but nobody can really punish it. And Bone Seven will make the long trek back to base. In the meantime, do want to point out that AI2000 going for his stacks here. Already got a double stack out for that Jakiro Puck probably to clear out. Maybe Eternal Envy tries to, and we'll see a quick deny here from J4. Just wanted that free trip back to base. Not really worth walking back with that low HP. Should buy a smoke first, I think. Are there too many creeps to stack? Yes, there are. He didn't get the next stack off. Sad He's already stacked too much. He's too good. At, he's too efficient. Dota says no. There are limits to what you can achieve as yeah, a support player. No more allowed. His Dragon Eye's getting styled on. But not that. He's 11 and 1. Considering that he's up against a dual lane and not getting help now, it's not that bad. Well, he had help from the AA. Just 
sitting for, there. Well, for like one wave. He's been stacking for the most part. Well, Owie also has been stacking, too. Yeah. Hey, they got the first blood. I don't think you can really expect much more out of your Dragon Knight. Yeah. Still doing alright. To a knight. He can only he can't really get uh creeps though, just because he's always scared of good old EE. Actually EE going to no reflection build again. Yeah, it feels like a single point would be warranted, especially when you're snowballing the lane like this. Or have the potential to. Yeah, forty percent or forty percent damage, sixty percent slow for two and a half seconds. That's pretty good. Actually, I mean the cast range is so low, though. I mean, I don't like how there's not really any synergy between Reflection and Metamorphosis. It just doesn't really... Terrible is just a weird hodgepodge of skills. Yeah. Like, he's basically got two ultimates for Metamorphosis and Sunder, and... Yeah. I don't know. He's just in an awkward place. He's still a strong hero, but an awkward hero. Yeah. <laughs> Certainly. He's, like, minor gank, like, minor survivability, a steroid. Just... Weird mix of skills. I like I like the old weird Terrorblade with that life drain. The the cast one or the channel or the one that the you channel didn't have the channel. One. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's so bad, but it was really fun. <laughs> did um, it have like zero like really low cooldown? I remember, so you could just like spam it if you leveled it up first. Yeah, easy jungle build. It was like being a pugna, except like you could act with an egg, but yeah, you just constantly suck them, suck them dry. So E going with the bottle, calling blade, transitioning into the jungle. They're Maximum even earlier Cloud before. 9 efficiency. Well, Bone 7 will take mid. This does mean they leave that off lane unchecked for Ditya Rod a free farm. Curious to see if he tries to take a greedy route on the back of this, or if he looks just to get involved early with his team. They could also potentially try to push this lane. I think he plays greedy rather than involved just because they have Void and Luna And they may go for a double Midas. And Dragon Knight. At least potential here with Cheshire Cat picking up his gloves of pace. Go triple Midas. All these heroes use Midas really well. Void, Luna, Dragonite all need their levels badly as your Void ends up going down middle or bottom lane. Pilot Eye got off the stun. They didn't even use the coil to secure that kill. Well, he also has no points in backtrack. I guess he was expecting with the dual lane that he could get away with it. I mean, that's still very ambitious versus the double range lane. And... I mean, if you, it, you know, it's where if you didn't want to go Midas, the Belt of Giant Strength is just a much better pickup for you. They do have a coil, and they're going to go back in on Cheshire Cat. Silence is there with no backtrack. Oh, whole time walk out. Looks like he'll barely survive that last auto attack. Not quite enough. They yeah. didn't have mana for coil, or they would have gotten that. Yeah, if he had bottled one more time, would have been an easy kill. And I think they know that he doesn't have backtrack. They should know. He doesn't backtrack anything, clearly. Yeah, or oh. he's just the most unlucky <laughs> player in the universe, but the Cloud9 have done the math. He is about to hit level 6, so he is at least getting his levels in the off lane. And Dragonite not spending his gold yet, up to 1200. Maybe we do see double, triple mice. No, okay, Dityara will go Yasha, but still a fairly farm-oriented build. Not trying to get those early drums or some HP from Treads or Akila, just straight towards the Manta. At the same time, if they go too greedy, though, they can get punished really heavily by Terrorblade. Since he has a really good start and is uncontested in his jungle, he could get a Manta up by, what, maybe like 14 minutes, maybe? And then they can start pushing. And then PR is also very ult-centric with the Dragonite, or sorry, with the Faces of Voidold and uh, Luna and AA, at least in the early game, especially if they go Midas. So They haven't used what, the just Luna one really Midas, maybe. I haven't pushed yet. And now yeah. it's going to get tough, because Fada's level 7, or about to be. Their Jakiro's hit level 6. Pushing into that is not too easy. They'll try to jump on the top lane, AUI 2000, getting caught out. Nuked a bit, concussive shots there, and he will end up dropping. At the same time, though, Fada, with this smoke, looking to get in close on Shachlo. Try to set up a kill. He'll wrap around the tower. Shachlo very far back. But they're going to commit to this a bit. The Illusions come walking forward. And Shachlo hugging that tier 2. He knows something's up. At the same time, it looks like PR will go for a tower of their own. Yeah, this mid tower is much more important, though. They have a glyph. This mid tower, I, I mean, it's already in that territory where even if you defend this push, it's too low to be of any Yeah, they're up against liquid use. fire anyway. So it's going down one way or the other. Shachlo does have his dragon form. He's going to pop it out. Maybe they just look to get kills on the back of this. They have a chronosphere ready as well. Don't know if they'll have to use it. Bone 7 gets time walk, slowed down, poisoned, and a long range concussive shot surges in. They'll secure the kill that way. They did hold the chrono, which is nice. 
They also denied the tower on top uh, for Cloud9. So, yeah, all in all. Big they win for them. They didn't get the Terrorblade either, even though Terrorblade only has 644 HP. He's still, like, super vulnerable at this point, but... Not, not, not anymore. Not anymore. Building those treads. I mean, he's still a bit vulnerable, but... They don't have Ice Blast yet, Mystic Flare not online yet, and without those spells and with the amount of farm that they haven't gotten on Cheshire Cat, they don't really have much burst. It's going to be tough to kill this Terrorblade, it feels. At least for now. They need to get these level 6s out in the supports. ASAP. Yeah, or nice Chrono Chain. It does go back for Treads in the end, so Cheshire Cat I think was debating a Midas, but it's just not going to happen. They de-warded the bottom Observer Ward though, maybe looking for a kill here. It's not going to be terribly easy though. They have Chrono sitting behind him. His pilot died with the swap. Uh-oh, this could be bad. If they can't silence him quickly enough, he gets off the swap. Now Eternal Enemy can turn and deliver. J4 will fall. He's looking for more kills now. The puck rotates in two. Three heroes likely to fall here. Soneko chased out. One more auto attack from the Terrorblade would probably do it, but they can't get in range for it. Scarf Mage was turning to, I think, try to silence the Venge, but just was a second late. Even if they had found him, I don't think they would have killed him, regardless of a uh, swap happening. They didn't have any damage. A he's not six. Yeah, Scarf no isn't six. Glare, no ancient apparition ice blast. It is painful. Faces Void doesn't have any items. Seems and like they're just looting the, losing the laning stage way too hard, and because of this Jakiro pick, that's a big problem. They're just going to keep on taking towers. Yeah, they, they Where's they PR's deep push? No Ice Blast? Chrono's on cooldown? Maybe they don't kill towers, but they definitely chip away at them here. So really the only one that can save them is Luna at this point. I mean, she's the only one that's really farming well, and she's not coming to fight. It's not that she can really do that much. This is like that I'd awkward say. time for the Luna power curve, though, where, like, you push towers really well from, like, the 0 to, what, 8 to eight to 10 minute mark at most, and then they need to go rice in the jungle for a while, get your BKB, your Manta, your Dominator, maybe your Butterfly, then you could start to deliver in fights, but she walks into the mid game where she's very vulnerable to all the magic damage from Cloud9, and... She can. I feel like she can only do something if the Void hits a good Chrono. Yeah. Otherwise, probably not. I mean, they can five man with the Luna if they wanted to, but... And the Jakiro, Witch Doctor, and Puck? Ugh. Well, I mean, Chrono plus A ult plus Luna ult would make quick work of, like, three of the heroes. Fado doesn't have a blink, so yeah, maybe they could pull it off. But uh, it's, it's pretty risky, and the, they didn't really draft that well around it, too. Because it's all Void that needs to make the plays. And they, as long as they dodge a Chrono, they should be completely okay. In Cloud 9 are going to smoke. They don't have a Chronosphere for 10 seconds. Fada and AUI getting revealed. Just uh, That was like 10 seconds later. PR could have gotten a double kill. Unfortunate. They even had four heroes in the neighborhood. But they get nothing. And the farm continues for Eternal Envy. Illusions clearing out waves bottom lane. He's going to ramble towards the Ancients. Looks like Kobe. Trying to farm these from distance with Metamorphosis. Can they contest this stack? I hope um, that the disobedient ancient Thunder Lizard <laughs> just <laughs> fuck that. I ain't moving. And now they they're in this weird position where they're like trying to push, but they don't really have a good way to protect this Dragon Knight. And they're not really fully committed to it because the Luna's not here, so they're gonna get Shade Shot coiled out. Now they look for the Chrono Death Ward's there though, and he didn't catch AUI. Uh oh. Well, fight's over now, folks. So Nico gonna fall next. Puck leaping forward. Directly over that Chrono, now trying to orb out. Eclipse not sufficient, it's only level 1. Can't even get a single kill. They may get turned on heavily here. Dit Yao Ra next on the list, they'll lose 3, make it 4 as J4 gets run down by your puck. One more auto attack will do it, Cheshire Cat, the lone survivor. And that's, that's awkward. That's how the cookie crumbles when you're up against the Witch Doctor's Void. If you don't Chrono him, fight is over. They didn't push when AA and Skyrath had six. They also have no way of protecting Dragon Knight. Even if they were six, they can't, it's not like they can save him. They don't have like a Venge Swamp. They don't have like a nice uh, AOE stun like Witch Doctor. But, yeah, I mean, I, their game plan with the Dragon Knight, I think was to just push a lot of towers early, but they lost their laning phase so badly that Dragon Knight pretty much isn't gonna have any effect in this game. Well, I'm curious to see how Cloud9 does if they face, if they win this, they move on, play VP Polar Secret. It's just every game, it's the Terrorblade, man. Like, at this point, it's just 
had, had they been able to practice anything else? Like, well, you know, I think run nothing but lately. They've been playing pretty well around it though. Like excluding Terrorblade. I mean, Terrorblade has done a little bit. Like he got the first blood. He was there for the kill in the mid. But I think the other four have been playing extremely well this game too. Fada, he had a zero six and one start this game. Uh, or last game with like a what 19 20 minute blink this one is 13 minute blink yeah with treads he, he also had a much easier lane got the safe lane farm mm -hmm. wasn't not like void can contest that especially not with uh, a support there well last game was just a wisp ember it's not it was supposed to be that bad for him it's a different approach PR took out oh, bottom lane we might have a go here Fada think you ought to jump in they're gonna try to chrono him perhaps no don't have it for 10 seconds Fada Nuked low, but not finished off that 2.4 second ultimate. Not quite as scary as the 2 second one. And Coil off the mark. Series of miscues here for both teams. Not Cheshire Cat going for the TP out. Cask doesn't get the vision for it, I guess. And now top lane. Bone 7 caught out. It's the one headed dragon versus the twin headed. Who will come out on top? Clearly, one head is stronger than two. Shade show the victor. Still. It's only the Jakiro, and Eternal Envy is going to now steal the enemy near ancient stack. Oh man, that efficiency. Yeah, him with these DDs too, all the time. So big. I mean, they know he's there. Can they do anything about it? They do have Chronosphere up, but no Mystic Flare just yet. He's got 700 health. This could actually end quite badly for him if they're able to get the jump. And now Concussive Shot got to slow him down. He walks back in. And he gets <laughs> two shots to the freaking Scarab Mage! I mean, look at his damage. Look at how low he is! Ven Kill this man! Kill this four! <laughs> he's almost got... He's got... His damage is like double... It's over half of his HP. So he's hitting for over 400 damage. Now the DD runs. Well, with Vendrara too, he also hit... He hit for like 460, I think. Yeah, that was literally a two shot. Not to mention the minus armor when she howls. Yeah. They really, that was such an opportunity, but they just didn't have any other follow up there. I'm, I didn't no actually chrono. know the metamorphosis was base damage, not just plus damage. That makes it a lot better with Venge. Yeah. That's true. It's kind of cool. Also, maybe with Empower. Yeah. Easy. Yeah, he is pretty damn fat. That would be a huge nerf if it was changed to just plus damage. Well, I think that's how it was in Dota 1, if I'm not mistaken. Hmm. Maybe it's just the way, like, it couldn't be coded that way, but the frog always wanted it to be. Uh-oh. Swap. Pylai Dai doing the loop D-low here on J4. He'll get silent. Sentry War was dropped. Mystic Flare was used, but the Yules of Bone 7 will turn this against J4. He gets punished for trying to take that rune. He'll end up dropping HF original. Not going to be enough to bring down Pi. Eternal Envy will engage. At the same time, a coil deployed onto Shadeshlow. I'll retreat back. Looks like they won't go on that. But they're just so weak and unable to fight right now. The Dragonite, still not a relevant hero this game. The Luna, just trying to farm a BKB. After the Asha, the Void, just a mask of death. I mean, Luna with her item builds. This this guy, he might be able to play Stark, but his other item builds are just like, what is going on with the Tiasha into Mormon Mask into Ogre Club? It's like, if you want to go fight early, you could just go straight for BKB or drums. If you want to farm efficiently, then go Yasha, maybe into, like, a Dominator and start stacking Ancients or something. Or mm -hmm. Yeah, it's or even get the Midas if you really feel like you can get away with something. But it's just a hodgepodge. I guess the way he's looking at it, like, he thought he could play Greedy, and now they're losing, so he wants to fight. But the end result is, he didn't pressure them early. And now by the time he wants to fight, Cloud9 might just be too strong to make it work. Nice plays by Fada. Getting aggressive, he'll jump back out, leaving his retreat path there. And Power Rangers congregating near the Roche pit, but just don't really have the firepower to walk in. And if they do, they're up against the Wave of Terror to give vision, the Witch Doctor ult to ruin them in the pit. And it all comes down to... I mean, the entire game, it feels, just rests on Cheshire Cat's shoulders right now, even though he's under-farmed. There's no way they take a fight without a perfect chrono. Yeah, I... I think they should... Wh why haven't they been chronoing plus Skyrath ulting people, too? I guess maybe Ventral Spirit is a big threat they need to worry about, but at the same time, that's pretty much their only way of getting quick and efficient kills. Maybe with AA ult, too. AA ult plus chrono can also uh, kill people, but sooner or later, Cloud9 is going to get to the point where they're too tanky to do so. Yes, they are. 
Mask of Madness finally done now on your Voids. They get a little more pickoff potential from this. Goes really nicely with the Ice Vortex for that bonus magic damage from the Bash. But oh no, Deyara, not where you want to be. Walking into the puck, coiled, stunned, and dead. Well, he was so close to his BKB too. Just needed a 200 gold. If he didn't have one of those random items, he'd be okay. Random. It is a little random. They have Mask of Madness on the Void now, but it's just hard to go in. Eternal Envy not so squishy anymore with his Manta. I mean, still pretty squishy, but with 21 armor, not an easy takedown. Well, he also has a ton of damage, too. Yeah, You'd better Chrono and Burst him, or you just... There's no way. They could still kill him, but there's the Venge Swap to worry about. That's the other thing. We saw it once earlier. Pile I die, it, Ben, it's going to be our first pipe of, of a very long time. Oh, Gets wow. that hood. That's a miracle. Okay, game's over. Cloud9 win. Pipe 100% win rate in the past one day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the funny thing is, like, the game's 80, 90% won if they play it correctly from here. And hey, it's securing the victory just like last game. If they had a pipe, things would have been different. Yeah. Cloud9 had a better draft to play from behind, though, because they weren't so farm dependent on some of those heroes. PR d definitely do not have a good draft to play from behind on this one. No blink initiators. No. Great They're very reliant on a long cooldown ultimate in the chrono. Yeah. They've only got one way to initiate as well. And the void is heavily countered this game. Witch Doctor all the Yule Scepter, the Jakiro. They have no the BKBs. Yeah. Doesn't look good. No AoE stuns. Eternal Envy is just the rune lord, man. I feel like every time I watch his Terrorblade, even when they're losing, he's just racking up runes all over the place. Those beast. He's been working out. Oh, they know Terrorblade's there. Getting swole. Uh-oh. This could be bad. Eternal Envy has that haste turn, though. They gotta get in close. I uh, <laughs> don't think he got... No blinks. What are they gonna do? Oh, now they're gonna know. <laughs> no Mystic Flare, at least. And they do bring their Void top lane. Cheshire Cat, though, spotted out. As Fada goes in with the silence, he's got a coil ready. Can Yules on Cheshire Cat to disengage, and he'll do it. Fada's just such a magician on that puck. They'll take the tower down, goes the way of the Radiant. Nobody gets the last hit, and now they look for a bit more. They're going to leap in with AI 2000 here. Macropire layered in with your Witch Doctor. Oh, decent backtracks, not good enough. Oh, nice coil by And then Fada. the two-hero coil. That's the game. That's the backbreaker here. As a hasted, not even metamorphosis, Terrorblade comes wrecking through. Brings this game down Sonico. Over. Four heroes down. And Power Rangers, unfortunately. It looked like they'd be up 1 0 and maybe even have a chance to 2 0 Cloud 9, but as quickly as their fortunes look good, they turn. And now they'll be knocked out of the Summit Europe and just unlikely to be the team that wins the fan vote end of the day for the compendium. So the road for them probably ends here. There was a part of me that was really looking forward to seeing them at a major LAN event, but. Doesn't look like it's going to be the Summit, most likely. Nice try. They had a pretty good run. Yeah. And Farewell, they still show Power Rangers. I think we'll, even though they lost this one, I think we're going to play their song as a an omen. Or uh, as an ode, not an <laughs> oh, omen. Man. As an omen. <laughs> a sign of things to come. Yeah. They, they deserve a little ode from us, wouldn't you say? Yes. Thank you for participating in the Summit 2, Power Rangers. Sadly, mm. your road ends here. Cloud9 survived. They will play in the lower bracket finals. They await the loser of our next match. That match will be, I believe we've got a little bit of a break, but it's going to be Secret versus VP Polar, and it will happen in uh, oh, one hour and a half. Hour and a half. So we've got a little break. Grab yourselves a snack, a drink, and uh, maybe stretch your legs out. Uh, if you want to watch something else, Synergy League is ongoing. The XMG Captain's Draft Invitational is ongoing. Huge shout-out to Dota Cinema. Already quadrupled their prize pool. People like hats, apparently, and Cinder and Sons fans. So, yeah, we'll take a quick break here, guys. We'll be back in an hour and a half. Congratulations to Cloud9. They stay alive, but they still got a ways to go.